a smaller update has dropped and to be honest I was pretty busy being a dad and was considering waiting for more stuff but I got a little opening here so let's do this right after Skins Monkey. Skins Monkey is an automated service that lets you trade skins instantly for a fee, sign up now and get up to $5 bonus. Simply add items from your inventory then find skins that matches your current balance. Site offers live support 24 seven. You can also top up your balance if you're missing a few dollars and there's a lot of skins to choose from. Visit my link down below to get to Skins Monkey. Three days ago, Yamanu on Reddit posted this. What you see in this example is a teammate on B site covering the T in front who is coming from middle. So obviously this is a problem of being able to see the enemy. Honestly, I've never thought about the overhead being an issue. It's very rare that it happens. I can't even recall last time it did. But apparently a lot of people were frustrated by this up to a point where some players even disabled the entire overhead feature. Yes, if you didn't know, inside the options under game, you have team positions where you can disable it entirely. In my opinion, this is a huge disadvantage, but if you know your teammates well and you have a good comms and you always sort of know where everyone is, then I guess there could be a benefit of disabling it. And if you're curious, here's with just location enabled, and this is with location and equipment enabled, which personally speaking, I think having, you know, both shown if you decide to have this on is just more useful. But going back to this post, compared to all the other similar versions of this post, this one received a lot of attention. And with lots of upvotes, you're more likely to get Valve on board. So this update introduced an important quality of life change to the overhead, where moving your crosshair towards a teammate will fade the overhead display. That's really the update. But something that many people have missed from this update is that you can control the fade to your personal needs. Use CL Team ID overhead fade near crosshair. The range is between 1 and 0, where 1 will almost completely hide the overhead, and 0 will pretty much revert the changes of this update. Here is a comparison of how much. Remember, this only triggers when you're actually aiming at the teammate. Personally speaking, I like it around 0.75, but you can experiment now and find something that you like. I would have also liked another command to change the sensitivity of when the fade occurs, just, you know, so you can maybe trigger the fade when you're actually aiming a bit closer to your teammate. And if you're not a fan of this update, maybe it's a bit distracting or something, use zero and that will make it look like it used to. So overall, this alone is a great update. Jackie, who also covered the update, was able to make a neat comparison for the kill feed icon changes. Credits goes to him. Here you'll see that certain weapons and the butt, I mean shadow daggers have been fixed. So now the air icons appear. And apparently they also fixed the bug where the HUD would look strange after watching a demo, which by the way, both were credited to Aquarius. He certainly happy about that. Next patch note is regarding some fixes to the scoreboard where certain buttons just didn't work from the last couple of updates. Can't really go into detail which one had issues or which ones, but Thor spotted changes to better handle multiple events on the scoreboard, so basically they did a little rework. Then finally this update is about taking over the bots, effectively focusing on more quality of life improvements. Apparently the first thing they did was a total revamp of the death experience. Remember how weird and clunky it felt before? Sadly I can't show you it this time, but it looked unfinished if you know what I mean. Also now when you're spectating they've squashed another bug that made switching between bots less seamless. Now these changes are interesting not really because of what actually changed but more why. For the game modes that you normally control bots in it's usually competitive modes right? Deathmatch and arms race have instant respawns so there's no reason to control a bot. But in competitive mode and premiere bots are barely part of the mode now when you really think about it so it's either just incredibly focused on the casual game mode or perhaps it's to prepare for something bigger in the future. And speaking of game modes, thanks to Osni here, Valve are also working on volume filters for each separate game mode, which is actually kind of neat since you would probably like to have deathmatch on a lower volume. But apart from this update, there are still bugs out there affected by recent changes like this one that I covered last video. And also we can't forget the sound bug that came right after they fixed the water sound bug, which can still haunt anyone to this day. We have no idea if this one's even fixed. But that's the end of this video. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.